Hello, and welcome to Nobody Inun's series of Warcraft history, where we discuss the lore of the Warcraft universe and the edited lore that was changed for the World of Warcraft game by Blizzard. Now, believe it or not, there is actually a lot of inconsistencies with the Warcraft universe. I imagine that most of you are very familiar with Blizzard's major success, World of Warcraft. But prior to this MMO, the history of this world and the races within it was vastly different than what we see in the WoW game today. Truthfully, only the people who played the RPG based in the Warcraft universe and read on its history would be able to notice this drastic change in lore and history. But before I begin today's episode, I'd like to reveal a little bit about myself. Number one, I am a huge fan of the Warcraft universe, and I have been for over 16 years. Two, I've read multiple books based in the universe, such as, but not limited to, game manuals and RPG rulebooks. Three, I've played the Warcraft games for several years prior to the release of World of Warcraft. And four, I've played the RPG and read on the history that came with it prior to the release of World of Warcraft as well. Now that you know a little bit about me, uh, here is a small list of examples that I would like to briefly mention about the lore and history that has undergone a massive change and altering in the Warcraft universe. Number one, the troll, more specifically the jungle troll, history, culture, and stature. Number two, the War of the Ancients. Number three, the Draenei and their origin story. Number four, the Blood Elves and their affiliation. And number five, the Forsaken. Of course, there are many other things that have been edited or even altered in the history and the making of World of Warcraft, but we'll address those issues in later episodes. I actually was a real big fan of the World of Warcraft video game until the release of the Burning Crusade, where Blizzard seemed to continuously change and alter the lore of what I personally fell in love with to more or less be what they wanted it to be. And when the Burning Crusade came out, that was the final straw for me, and I stopped playing World of Warcraft entirely. But even though I stopped playing that video game, I still did keep up with the lore and read up on the material that Blizzard released regarding the history of it. In this series, I intend to bring to you, the viewer, both the current and original Warcraft lore, to present to you the altered stories as well as their original stories. We will discuss events, wars, battles, as well as characters and factions. I will do my utmost best to present to you, the viewer, the story and lore that I fell deeply in love with, and the altering of this story which personally incensed me, which is now the main canon of the Warcraft fantasy world. To begin, we have to turn to the very foundations of the Warcraft universe. Now this timeline is unofficial, it's recorded through a collection of books, articles and events that have taken place actually in the World of Warcraft universe. Numerine is based on the opening of the Dark Portal, as this is the method used by the latest sources. Some sources have the opening of the Dark Portal roughly around 25 years before the start of World of Warcraft, but others have it starting around 30 years before the start of World of Warcraft. In this timeline, however, we're going to use the 30-year standard. Blizzard has used two standards when establishing dates in various official timelines, but both are based on the opening of the Dark Portal. All dates are considered to be spans of time from one to the next since many events are only given vague ordering and estimated dates. It should be considered, however, that this is an unofficial timeline, but it is as accurate as it can possibly be, whereas Blizzard has not provided any official stated timeline. Okay, with all that aside, let's get started. The beginning of Azeroth was around 147,000 years prior to the opening of the Dark Portal. No one knows exactly how the universe began. Some theorize that a catastrophic cosmic explosion sent the infinite world spinning out into the vastness of the great dark worlds that would one day bear life forms of wondrous and terrible diversity. Others believe that the universe was created as a whole by a single all-powerful entity. Though the exact origins of the chaotic universe remain uncertain, it is clear that a race of powerful beings arose to bring stability to the various worlds and ensure a safe future for the beings that would follow in their footsteps. The Titans, colossal metallic-skinned gods from the far reaches of the cosmos, explored the newborn universe and set to work on the worlds they encountered, 
They shaped the worlds by racing mighty mountains and dredging out vast seas. They breathed skies and raging atmospheres into being. It was all a part of their unfathomable, far-sighted plan to create order out of the chaos. They even empowered primitive races to tend to their works and maintain the integrity of their respective worlds. Ruled by an elite sect known as the Pantheon, the Titans brought order to a hundred million worlds scattered throughout the great dark beyond during the first ages of creation. The benevolent Pantheon, which sought to safeguard these structured worlds, was ever vigilant against the threat of attack from the vile extra dimensional entities of the twisting nether. The nether, an ethereal dimension of chaotic magics that connected the myriad worlds of the universe, was home to an infinite number of malefic and demonic beings who sought only to destroy life and devour the energies of the living universe. Unable to conceive of evil or wickedness in any form, the titans struggled to find a way to end the demon's constant threat. Alright, that excerpt can be found in the Mythology of the Titans, Chapter 1, in the World of Warcraft Universe. So basically, the Pantheon is the Titan High Council. It's a group of titans who shaped the worlds and watched over the universe, more or less like guardians. And they're the leaders of the entire Titan race. They actually um, even empowered the dragon aspects on the planet of Azeroth. Uh, they include the following. Their leader is Amonthul, High Father of the Pantheon. He bestowed a portion of his cosmic power upon the massive branch dragon, Nasdormu, to guard time itself and police the ever-spinning pathways of fate and destiny. Aenar, Matron of All Life, gave a portion of her power to the red dragon Alexstrasza to safeguard all living creatures within the world, referring to Azeroth. She also blessed Alexstrasza's younger sister, the Leith dragon, Ursera, with a portion of nature's influence to watch over the growing wilds of the world. Norganon, Lord Keeper and Master Magician, granted the blue dragon, Malagas, a portion of his vast power to be the guardians of magic and hidden arcanum. Galganeth, the Thunderer, son of Imanthul and Aenar, is the creator of the skies and the seas, and he's the father of all the sea giants. Kasgaroth, shaper and forger of the world, bestowed some of his vast power upon the mighty black dragon, Neltharion, and gave him dominion over the earth and the deep places of the world, again referring to Azeroth. Sargeras, champion of the Pantheons, the Titans' greatest warrior, defender of their worlds, who left their ranks and became the greatest traitor, he is the supreme commander of what is now known as the Burning Legion. Agrimar, general of the Titan army, is the successor to Sargeras in the Pantheon after his fall and involvement with the Burning Legion. Now basically, the Titans there are also known as the Makers, the Travelers in Troll Lore, and the Great Ones in Oracle Lore, are a race of extremely powerful majestic creatures akin to a god. They are metallic giants that traveled across the cosmos bringing order to worlds, and many believe them to simply be a prognator race. There's actually uh, two subspecies of titans, there's the Asir and the Banner. Their figure is humanoid but huge, they're gigantic, and their skin is gleaming and metallic. Very little was ever touched on and it's known about the titans in both WoW and the original Warcraft lore. But both, however, agree and conclude that the Titans were the creators of the world, and they are the most powerful opponents of the Burning Legion. However, unlike the original lore, which only loosely touched on the Titans, except for Sargeras, WoW's lore expanded on the mysteriousness of the Titans. According to the current WoW lore, the Titans can be found in the folklore of the Trolls, the Oracles, the Night Elves, the Dwarves, and the Humans. Each race speaks of gigantic beings that descended from the cosmos that came to their world, shaping the land when it was young, and left it to discover its own fate. Some ancient cities have been discovered on Azeroth that have direct connections to the Titans, such as Oldham beneath the Terneris Desert, Ulduar beneath the storm peaks of Northrend, and Oldemon hidden deep under the dwarven home in Kasmodan. Each Titan cultivates a specific interest that relates to a particular element or energy type, essentially to some small aspect of creation over which the titan holds a measure of dominance. Some titans refer to the piece of creation upon which they focus as their sphere of power. Titans generally believe they are invincible. They wade into the thickest of battles using their most powerful abilities, or even just swinging with massive alloyed fists. 
Titans with well-defined spheres of power have widely varying combat tactics, focusing primarily upon the strengths of their spheres. Despite this, however, there is some evidence that in the war with the old gods, at least one titan was killed. Alright, so more or less, both Warcraft and the World of Warcraft lore agree, as already stated, that the titans created the world of Azeroth, the planet. They just basically wandered throughout the universe trying to shape planets and to bring them order and stability instead of letting them float around seamlessly without any kind of destiny or purpose. There's not a whole lot that's really talked about in the original Warcraft lore on that, other than what's really been said about the Titans. But you obviously see World of Warcraft expanded on the, create, uh, on the Titans. I mean, they created specific Titan characters. They created the Council. They even had them establishing a relationship with the Dragon Aspects. And then you get an origin story of how the Dragons got their power. Um, they're really just basically super powerful entities that had no real equal other than Sargeras after he betrayed them and joined the Burning Legion. But we'll talk about that in another episode. All right, that's it for today. Uh, that's the creation story of Warcraft and the history of its world and universe. Um, that's basically how everything was created, how everything began, and how everything just started. Thank you for watching today's episode. If you want to see more episodes and comparisons, please subscribe to my channel and like this video. If you have any questions, please feel free to message me. I don't want to leave the comment box open because I know how comments can go on YouTube, and I don't really want to deal with all that. So if you're really interested or you want to leave a comment, please feel free to message me. Until next time, I will see you on the next episode.